Welcome to AI Business TV here at the AI Summit San Francisco 2019. And we're very pleased to be joined today by Zuman Garmani, who is the Chief Scientist at Uber. Hi, how are you doing? Great, thanks. Uh, yeah, doing fantastic. So you just come off stage from the keynote presentations this morning where you delivered a keynote on the new frontiers of machine learning for Uber. Right. Um, for those who haven't been able to join us today at the AI Summit, um, what were the kind of key takeaways from that session? Yeah, so one of the key takeaways is that um, when people think about AI and Uber, they often think about autonomous vehicles. But actually, um, AI broadly defined um, powers a lot of the core services that Uber delivers. And so um, the way I would explain that is, although AI is a term that um, people don't always sort of understand and sometimes they're influenced by science fiction when they think about AI, um, very prosaically, you could think about AI as taking data and using algorithms to make uh, predictions and to optimize decisions. And that actually underlies um, everything that we do at Uber. So it's very much, uh, you know, uh, living in the way we uh, model cities, we predict ETAs, we optimize matches, we do uh, interactions for customer service, we provide safety for our customers, um, we uh, make the uh, platform as uh, seamless as possible for all our users. We get better location data. All of these things are actually AI driven. And that's in the core part of the business. Fantastic. So what, out of all of those then, or, or maybe some others that you haven't referred to as yet, what do you think are the biggest milestones um, or biggest strides Uber has made in terms of machine learning kind of breakthroughs and innovation? Yeah, so one of the interesting areas where um, AI and machine learning um, can help tremendously is in safety. So um, Uber uh, is a platform that connects millions of people. And when you have a system like that, safety is incredibly important. And we can use um, uh, signals and information and machine learning algorithms to provide um, all sorts of things to make the service as safe as possible. And so that's one of the areas where um, our team has been very heavily involved. Um, for example, uh, one of the things that uh, was launched um, in our, uh, by our CEO in a safety launch recently was um, a hands-free uh, pickup experience for drivers. Um, so we really don't want drivers to have to interact with the screen on the mobile phone more than they need to. And so conversational or speech interfaces is something that powers that interaction. But there are many, many examples like that, including like, um, you know, uh, reaching out to people if, uh, if uh, they may have been in an accident, reaching out to them in real time very quickly and sort of offering to connect them to uh, emergency services, um, including uh, as well, like alerting uh, to situations that may be unsafe for the rider or the driver. Um, so these are applications of AI that maybe are not as um, sort of uh, science fiction is a robot car that's going to drive you from A to B, but they're very, very important to our millions of uh, customers and driver partners. For sure. And we often take these massive strides and milestones almost for, for granted. It's yeah. so ubiquitous. It's, it's part of, of, of the service that we... Yeah, and so the way we think about things is um, that we want everybody to be on the happy path. So the happy path is that magical experience where, you know, um, you know whether you're a rider, a driver, a restaurant, a courier, um, a, you know, a truck driver on Uber Freight, um, all of these different uh, uh, customer bases, these people that we interact with, we want their experience to be smooth. And so there are many things that can take you off the happy path. Everything from, you know, your location data is bad, right? And you, you know, the, you get picked up in the wrong place. And, you know, that can lead to safety problems as well. You know, maybe you're uh, unnecessarily going to cross the street when you shouldn't have to cross the street, things like that. So they may sound trivial, 
But when you multiply these things by the, the literally tens of millions of experiences that people have in the real physical world, these are things that um, we need to get right. And we use AI, machine learning algorithms to really try to get them as right as possible. And of course, it's, um, it's, uh, the work is never finished, so we can always do better. So talking about the work never being finished then, um, you're a, a pioneer within machine learning. Um, what have been kind of the, the biggest strides that has, has happened in the industry and what do you kind of see yet to come? What's kind of bubbling? What trends are we yeah. going to see in the next year or two, do you That's think? That's a great question. So, um, so I've made an interesting transition being an academic for most of my career to working in industry in the last three years. And, um, you know, having been an academic for about 20 years, I've seen many of the trends in machine learning and AI um, come and go. It's a very faddish sort of industry or, or field of research. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, the big one that everybody talks about is deep learning. These are these um, uh, machine learning systems that people tend to associate with like um, the way the brain works and things like that. And you hear about that a lot in the popular press. Mm -hmm. It turns out, and this is something I talked about in the keynote, there's nothing really magical about deep learning systems. They're just in, they're almost like brute force systems that extract patterns from massive amounts of data. There has been a tremendous amount of uh, progress that has been made in the last couple of years because of deep learning, but it's not just because of deep learning. Really the things that are driving that are the availability of massive amounts of data through the internet the availability of massive compute power through um, GPUs. These are graphic processing units that were originally developed for gaming, but have ended up being like a major hardware driver for the AI industry. And so these trends, massive compu compute, massive amounts of data, massive number of people coming into the field and uh, deep learning have caused a lot of um, uh, real breakthroughs to happen. So that's a good thing. But we're reaching the point, I feel, where we've milked this uh, you know, technology quite a lot, and uh, we need to look out for what's next, what's next on the horizon. And so uh, well, some of the things that are next on the horizon are areas that we've invested in at Uber, um, along with many other companies. Mm -hmm. um, these include areas where, for example, um, you really want to automate things much more. So, so machine learning, ironically, is a very handcrafted thing. So it's very talent um, intensive. So you need to find experts to tweak algorithms and data sets and so on. And actually, a lot of that can be automated. So this is the area of automated auto ML, auto machine learning. That's an area that we care a lot about, um, as well as uh, the classic deep learning methods um, are terrible at representing uncertainty. And uncertainty is just the fact that um, when we're trying to predict what's going to happen with new data, we don't really know. And we want our machine learning systems to know when they don't know and to signal when they don't know. And you can imagine for uh, many, many applications, like, you know, including applications that relate to safety, um, you really want systems that uh, know when they don't know. And so that's an area, probabilistic machine learning, I talked about that in my keynote, that's an area that marries very old ideas from statistics. Um, and when I say very old, I don't mean a decade, I mean from the 1700s, marries those ideas with modern deep learning methods to get models that um, are more honest about their lack of knowledge. Fantastic. And. Um... Well, we've got you here. We just really want to um, find out a little bit more because you're one of our kind of most recognizable figures um, here today delivering your keynotes. Um, I just wanted to learn a little bit more about kind of your background um, and what kind of like, led you into, into your career and your role now at, yeah. at Uber. Um, I've had an unusual background. I mean, uh, in the sense, of, in a couple of different senses. So one of them is that um, I decided I wanted to be an AI researcher when I was about 13 or 14. So I've been incredibly consistent um, on the one hand. Um, I did have some detours along the way. At some point, I didn't really know whether I wanted to become an AI researcher or become a computational neuroscientist. So a computational neuroscientist is somebody who uses 
mathematics, engineering principles, algorithms to understand how the brain works. So that relates more to biology. And so I went down that path for many years. I did my PhD in computational neuroscience, actually. And then I couldn't really choose computational neuroscience, which is a field of science, or AI, which is more engineering, you build things, um, up until the point that I realized I wasn't very good as a computational neuroscientist. And I was much better suited for doing AI and machine learning. And then I, I made that choice. Then I thought I was going to be an academic for my whole career. Um, and I was wrong there. I also thought that the field of AI and machine learning was, you know, intellectually very interesting, like particle physics is interesting or, you know, fundamental biology is interesting. But I didn't realize that um, it was going to become so um, practical. And what I mean by practical is, as an anecdote, um, I remember flying into San Francisco and going probably in an Uber from the airport to downtown and seeing a billboard saying machine learning. And I just thought that's, a, that's bizarre because I've been in this field for 20 years. I never thought that the name of that field was going to appear on a highway billboard. billboards, right? And that's how, um, how much the field has really impacted um, the, the real world, as we say, in academia. Um, and so, uh, so I was an academic, but as the um, AI industry started picking up, there were a huge number of startups. And I got involved along with some of my students and colleagues in a number of different startups and advisory roles originally. Then I was involved in founding a, a startup. And, um, and then at some point that startup gained the interest of many of the big tech companies. And Uber was at the perfect spot for that in the sense that some of the larger tech companies had already made big AI investments. So our team and our technology would have been just absorbed into some larger um, research uh, community at the company, which would have been interesting, but not as impactful. Uh, there are some companies that uh, know they want AI, but they don't know what to do with it. So they will acquire some AI technology or build an AI division or acquire an AI startup, and they don't know how to integrate it into their business. They sort of you know, there is a, an organ rejection sometimes, like those, those efforts fail. Uber knew exactly why it needed AI in its core business. It had already made a major investment in autonomous vehicles and had really pushed the whole technology field of autonomous vehicles to another level. Um, and uh, when uh, I came on board with my team, we uh, got situated in the Uber headquarters on the main floor where the CEO and all the other executives were deeply integrated into the company. And this is really part of the, I would say, part of the recipe for success is uh, there are a number of things. One of them is uh, be bold and integrate deeply into the business. Um, recruit talented people and to do that you have to recruit some senior talented people, people and then more junior talented people will uh, come join you. Um, and then also um, be business focused but be flexible because researchers in this field of AI and machine learning um, have a tremendous number of options these days. And so they, uh, they need to be able to engage with the external community, even if they're an industry. They need to be able to publish, they need to be able to talk about some of their work, they need to be able to attend conferences, open source software, whatever their colleagues are doing at the other major tech companies. So companies that shy away from these um, basic uh, you know, tricks um, end up not having very successful AI teams, I would say. It's all about the discussion. It, it, it frames everything, right? So yeah. it moves, moves the industry forward. Yeah, and, and it is a tremendously collaborative industry. So people share ideas, they publish papers, they uh, open sources really revolutionize the way we do things. Um, so we need to all engage in this common um, effort. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.